Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Beat Drop. My name is Mr. Yeti, and I appreciate you guys tuning in here. What a fantastic feature match we just watched, guys. That was amazing between, uh, pardon me, between Redacted and Valkyrie. Map 5 banger, Redacted, pulling it out there at the last possible minute, uh, coming back from a 2-1 deficit to take that one 3-2 against previously unbeaten Valkyrie. you got to give a lot of credit to Redacted for the huge performance here today. So congratulations to Valkyrie. Or, sorry, congratulations to Redacted on the huge performance, I should say, today. And uh, Redacted starting off the stage with a 1 0 record. Gotta like that. Stage two is crunch time. So it's time to get busy and stay on top of your game because every loss is important right now. And uh, we just saw that here tonight. Every loss can mean a loss of playoff seed. So you got to win as many games as you can right now. So Valkyrie, they'll bounce back. It's a good team there. No question about it. Uh, just a reminder what we have coming up here in Tranquility tonight on the beat drop. Uh, we're going to start it off with uh, four interviews here. We have Hydros coming in here, uh, and I apparently left my notes sitting somewhere, which is awesome because I just forgot which team. Yeah, this is great. I don't have my note window open. That game went so long that I forgot to leave my notes out. But So Hydros uh, with us here tonight. Hydros, of course, plays four. Fire breathing rubber duckies. Thank you very much. And so sorry about that, guys. This is what happens when you have a 40 minute delay on your mat on your show because of a really good feature match. You accidentally close your note window, which is really helpful for me. Uh, and then we also have YB from Firefight. And then we have Nagisa from the Decapitators and also from the content creation team. And then also tonight we have a recorded interview from uh, one of our friends in the Harmony EU division. And that is FT from Thunderbolt Rewind. That'll be wrapping up the night here tonight. So stay tuned for that. It's a lot of fun, guys, and uh, we're excited to have you here uh, with us in uh, this show tonight. But without further delay, we are going to go ahead and bring in Hydros now. Welcome, Hydros. How are you doing? Good, good. How about you? I'm doing good, other than the part where I forgot which team you were on, and I feel really <laughs> bad about that, and I'm quite sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's a long name. It, it is. It's, it's a lot of syllables. It's a lot of syllables. It was very entertaining Uh you just saying the name of the matchup you had with Big Bang Buccaneers earlier this season because it took a few breaths to get through that name, which was very funny. Uh, <laughs> anyways, Hydros, uh, this is not your first season with Tranquility. I know that much. So can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, your your Overwatch journey, how you got to where you are here uh, today with Fire Breathing Rubber Duckies? Um, I mean, I started Overwatch when it first released. We ordered it. Um, and then fast forward... Found about Tranquility from the Dallas Fuel server off of Thea and Caden. And then I joined Chrysalis, played last season off tank. And this season, I wanted to take a little bit of things back because I was taking a lot of larger classes this quarter for my um, so went DPS. And here I am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. I mean, we've had so many people come over from Caden uh, and that fuel server, I swear. It's becoming frightening. There's so many fuel fans right now in Tranquility. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So, you're with FBRD this season. FBRD started strong. A little bit of a weird middle, but it's like it was a competitive pool A it's the, or pool for the uh, stage one. It seemed like you're sitting in pool B right now and you're coming off a win yesterday, I believe, correct? It was a 3 0 or a 3 1? Uh, yeah, 3 0. 3-0, well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys feeling right now going through stage two? You feeling still pretty confident about uh, where you guys are at? Um, we're definitely doing a lot better compared to uh, the first stage. Um, uh, just some things happened. Um, just a series of unfortunate events uh, happened for the team. But we're doing really well now. Gotcha. All right. So a little bit about, I guess, your Overwatch game. You're playing DPS this season, off tank last season. Is this something you're feeling like might be a permanent home for you when you're looking at competitive Overwatch? Or are you thinking maybe you're going to tread back over to the tank waters here once Overwatch 2 rolls around? Um, I think it really depends. Mm -hmm. um, obviously on how the rework's going on and how maps and game modes go on for Overwatch 2. Um uh, when I played Overwatch 2 and BlizzCon, it was pretty fun, but that was back when it was 66 still. But um, if DPS is still interesting to me, um, and the tanks seems ruined from my perspective, um, I might stick in DPS, but if tanks seem really fun, I'll probably go back to tank. Gotcha, gotcha. So you actually got to play Overwatch 2 back when back at BlizzCon, 
Really? Yeah. Well, the, the last BlizzCon, actually, I believe. Right, the very last one. The what very easily could be the last BlizzCon ever. Well, that's that's awesome, and there's definitely. I'm jealous, at least. Um, I can't speak for anybody else. Uh, speaking of everybody else in the chat, if you have any questions you want to ask Hydros here before the end of this interview, feel free to chime in. I'd be happy to pitch them over his way. Uh, is there any specific uh, hero uh, that you kind of gravitate for or toward? I know you said off tank when you were on Chrysalis last season. Is there a specific hero you tend to play a lot more than others? Um, I think for DPS, is definitely Soldier, just because <laughs> um, tracking is different everything else um i guess for tank uh i mostly gravitate towards zarya and diva but um monkey's been my my pocket pick so gotcha gotcha now looking forward here again talking about i guess about overwatch 2 are you feeling positive about it i know a mix a lot of people see it as a mixed bag for 5v5 but a lot of stuff's coming out i'm assuming you're signed up for the beta and how you feeling about it I signed up for the beta. Um, I'm mixed as well because mm -hmm. I'm sad that tank synergy is going to be gone, especially like in pro play. Because I love seeing the coordination between two tanks, especially since I've played off tank and uh, Corneo the main tank. But having one tank is going to be kind of odd. But I believe in the dev team; they can make something happen. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, look at outside of Overwatch, because, you know, like we always like to say on this show, there is life outside of Overwatch, believe it or not. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, kind of some things that you like to do outside. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is uh, that you're big into shoes. Now, that is a very short statement. It can mean a lot of things. Can you go on? Can you go on and explain? Um, well, I've had my shoe collecting phase. Um, oh wow! I just noticed them behind you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's one back there. Um, I have a bunch of other shoes. I have some um, stored at other places, but um, just I guess it's like hype beast culture in a way. But I don't like hype beast shoes. I just wear and get whatever I see is looks good or is comfortable. But gotcha. overall, it's um, it's a pretty good hobby. Um, just depends on who you ask. It's can be expensive, cannot be expensive. It depends. All right. I do have another question here. You talk about cars as well. Is it a working on cars type thing or just like looking like collectibles, cars or collectible cars, car shows? Like what kind of, what do you, when you say cars, uh, expand upon that? Um, well, I like racing. I like Formula One. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Race. Um, also, just regular car community things within. Um, my community, I've been to a couple car meets, um, been to uh, like an initial D inspired cafe um, near where I live, like an hour drive about. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, just some mods, maintaining wraps. All outside of my realm, I drive a family car, so I can't really sit and talk about anything here. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the things you talked about, and I, I have to ask you to expand upon this, and I'm sorry, and I, I wish I had asked you in the DM, but I want to mention again, you say student sobering. Oh, did it? It's autocorrect? Yeah, yeah auto they might have autocorrected. It's a uh, stunt sabering. So stunt sabering. Okay. <laughs> student sobering. I was like, I, I saw that when I looked through it just a minute ago, and I'm like, I have to know more. Stunt sabering <laughs> is also very, is very cool. I thought you were like out on the streets, like finding college students at bars and being like, this isn't the way. Like, <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, I, I sent that message um, walking between classes, but um, that's awesome. Stunt sabering is something that my friends and I do. Okay. Um, I'll bring up my saber. I got it here. Ooh, all right. Go but then. it's lightsabers. And oh, okay. They're, I'll turn it on, but they're graded enough so you can hit other lightsabers and face. I, I don't condone it, but technically, yes, you hit people with it. Um, but it's really fun. We do, we basically just spar each other. Um, awesome. it's good exercise. Uh, we use forms from Star Wars, obviously. Um, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I did something way less cool than that in 
college where I just hit people with the crappy plastic lightsabers. They break on people <laughs> and then you make them cry or something. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, we're coming up on the end of our time here, Hydro. So I do want to ask you, of course, just, is there anything else you want to say? Anything else uh, you want to mention before we uh, call, her, call her a night here for you? Um, I have a couple of shout outs. Um, sure. Shout out to Chobes, Kobe, um, my main tank man from last mm-hmm. season. Uh, some other former teammates in uh, the Crystal Boys. Shout out to my teammates, uh, Drugs Mom, yeah, uh, Mooncake Sister. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face with this. Shout out to Night Night, great coach. Um, I, I can tell you with confidence, this show yeah. shouting out the ladies on this show is never going to get you very far. I can tell you that much. So, um, <laughs> don't, don't worry. <laughs> I had a question about Shobi. Uh, it's from Gap actually. Uh, Gap says thoughts on Shobi's sleep schedule. Um, Shobi could be an Overwatch League player if he actually got his sleep schedule figured out. But unfortunately, he cannot somehow, for the life of him, figure it out, and he is stuck in Army Tranquility. You know, I've been stuck there for eight seasons, so I can't sit and talk. But <laughs> maybe I need to work on my sleep schedule, I guess. All right, Hydros, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much, and best of luck to you the rest of the way. All right. All right, we're going to go now to our next interview tonight as I update the nameplate on the screen here. And it is YB from Firefight. How are you doing, YB? I'm doing great. How about you? <laughs> I am super swell. Thank you very much. Uh, YB, I got to ask some questions because obviously this isn't your first uh, season in Tranquility, I guess. How did we get to this point? Uh, Tell us a little about your Overwatch history. Well, I started playing Overwatch back in 2017 on my old Xbox One. I was bronze at the time, which was not fun. Been there. uh, Still am. Got a PC 2019, uh, hit plat. And uh, I found Tranquility uh, shortly after. I didn't start playing until Season 6, where I joined Void for Stage 1. And then I swapped over to Firefight in Season 6 and uh, made Finals. Unfortunately, didn't win. (laughs) Season 7, I played for Lotus uh, for first half. Second half, I decided to take a break. And now in Season 8, I am back on Firefight in Discord tier. Awesome, awesome. So dr- brought you back to the firefight, guys, here uh, yet again. Uh, firefight, kind of up and down stage one, but stage two, if I remember correctly, I believe you guys started off with a, a win here to start off the stage, correct? Am I remembering this correctly, or am I putting you in a bad uh, spot? We have not played Oreo Fleet yet. Oh, We're that's playing right. We're playing them tomorrow. Thank you, thank you. That's right. I, I do have that down here. I'm looking at my notes for... This is how organized I am, by the way, guys, just in case there was ever a question as to how I manage uh, to do things here. Uh, But obviously, you know, like I said, stage one didn't go exactly the way that Firefight was hoping. But going into stage two here, you got an interesting pool, Oreo Fleet, Fenrir and Oath. Are you how you feeling about this stage? You feeling confident you guys can uh, push through some of these tougher opponents? Um, I think this is a super winnable pool for us. I think Fenrir, a good team. Um, Oreo Fleet, good team as well. Oath, I haven't seen anything on, so I can't comment. But I'm confident that we can win, and uh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And this season, you are playing on the tank role, right? I, I am a main support. I was oh, on support. tank for... That's right, pre-season. that's right. It was just the beginning of it. There we go. That was just the very beginning, of course, of course. All right. Now, I guess I have a, a question here kind of building up into it. Now, where do you see kind of Overwatch being for you here as we start to move into the new phase of Overwatch, the 5v5s, the Overwatch 2s? How are you feeling about the changes? How are you feeling moving forward here uh, in a competitive way? I don't know. It's super <laughs> It's super up in the air right now. I need to get my hands on it to get... 100% feeling, but mm-hmm. from what I've seen, the tank role doesn't seem very fun anymore. <laughs> um, supports haven't really changed much from what I've seen, and DPS, uh, who knows? So <laughs> it's I need to play it to get yeah. like a 100%. You signed up for the signed up for the beta? Oh yeah. i can't miss it i hear that i hear that uh i'm definitely looking again outside of the realm of overwatch because as we all know overwatch has been the same game for the past two uh two calendar years Uh, that's that's (laughs) 
it's another story. Uh, talking to you earlier, you mentioned you're spending uh, a lot of time in uh, doing some visual effects works on the side and some animation, graphic design kind of stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. So in 10th grade, um, there was a class for graphic design and visual effects. And I decided to take it because I thought it was a field that I was pretty interested in. Mm -hmm. And I was taught some basics on how to use like Photoshop, After Effects. And I've been doing that on the side for a bit. Uh, more visual effects, less graphic design. Not really too confident on that. And um, in September, I'm going to college for uh, visual effects and animation. So I'm looking to make a career out of it as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Best of luck. I know a place that always is looking for volunteers for graphic design and animation stuff. So if you ever, I'm not saying anything, but you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. I have to ask as well, because it looks like you mentioned here, uh, you're, obviously you're spending a lot of time playing other games. What kind of other games are you looking at right now? Primarily? I know, obviously, I played other games with you as well, but what what other what other <laughs> games are you typically playing these days? Um, I've been getting into Valorant a bit. I know Valorant's pretty cringe, but I've been <laughs> playing a bit of that. Um, I like playing strategy games. I love strategy games. Just I love games that make me think outside of just a hey, point and click. Um, uh, other than that, I don't really play much games other than Overwatch because I. I'm kind of an Overwatch simp, so. <laughs> God, I understand. That. I understand. I understand. Why be? I understand that life more than you know. <laughs> that's 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 the that's when you're when my wife literally bought me nothing but Overwatch stuff for Christmas. I realized I had a problem, and I think that was the that was the moment where I realized it. So I understand that life. Trust me. Uh, nobody be like me. Anyways, um, <laughs> all right, YB. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, Overwatch 2, obviously a lot of excitement going in. You you playing on the main support. Is this kind of a role you see yourself staying in long term or kind of thinking about mixing it up here, moving in the future, just kind of playing whatever the team needs or whatever strikes your fancy once uh, once we get to Overwatch 2 time? Um, I'm looking to switch around. I've been playing main support for a long time now. Sure. And it's getting less and less enjoyable. And I'm looking to switch over maybe to TPS. Uh, maybe the main tank, who knows, but for Overwatch 2, I just, I need to play it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I but understand. for now, I'm sticking to main support. <laughs> All right, YB, it looks like I am just about out of time here. Is there any other questions you want to add, or not questions, pardon me, any other statements or any shout outs you want to make here to the community before we let you go? Uh, I want to shout out my manager, Potato, for uh, putting up with me for so long. I can... <laughs> I can be quite the handful sometimes, and I appreciate it. And I also want to shout out the people in SMOT. They're uh, they're great. And I want to shout out them out for being such great friends. <laughs> oh, SMOT. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, YB. Best of luck to you. Uh, best of luck to you the rest of the season. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to see you in a Valorant lobby here in about 20 minutes or so. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you soon, YB. All right. We'll See get you. it over. We'll get it over now to our next interview and our final live interview of tonight. And that is Nagisa. Welcome, Nagi. How are you doing? Hi, doing good. How about you? Oh, I'm swell. I've been doing interviews for the past, you know, 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hanging in there, having a good time. Uh, yeah. I was supposed to have a partner for this. And I'm not saying anything about the person who was supposed to be here. I would never call them out publicly or anything like that it'd be rude if i was to call out anybody publicly on screen i'm just saying uh mm -hmm. i would i would never ever ever do that serif uh but anyways <laughs> anyways <Little serif. laughs> I, you know what it's three interviews i can handle it i can do it myself and people love hearing from me don't they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nagi. Uh, this this is not uh, this season. You're with the Decapitators, uh, but you have obviously had a hell of a journey in tranquility. Can we talk a little bit about your history in Overwatch and how you got to where you got? Yeah, um, I feel I, I feel like I've told this story a few times before over the course <laughs> of my Trank history. But uh, yeah, so I started playing after the first. Well, I started playing during the first Summer Games of Overwatch. 
and I played versus AI because I was too scared to fight people. And um, after I started really wanting to learn more, I went to SVB's server, and that's where I found Trank because uh, Triage had posted a uh, looking for players for Maelstrom. So I tried out for them. I got approved, and I played for Maelstrom for two seasons and then i had the honor of running or co-captaining tempest and then eventually being the gm and captain of tempest then i went to seal team spuds trying out uh some dps and now i'm here <laughs> on decapitators decapitators all right how are you feeling this season has been i i don't know i mean i i, I, I know about it obviously because i help manage the team but I, I guess i need to ask just because i've been asking everybody else nagi i mean it's been an interesting season but decapitators are still through it all have found a way to not drop a match yet uh mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about this very strange ride decaps are on right now uh yeah so we seem to be getting these two one ones the past few weeks it's pretty interesting <laughs> uh <laughs> i think it's just i don't know we're the we're that kind of team that's like we need those maps to warm up and then we kind of get going and um you know, we've had a little bit of issues with finding a, a solid main tank. We keep kind of going back and forth. Uh, you know, people come in and then things happen, which is fine, you know. But it's been uh, it's been interesting. So <laughs> it certainly has been. <laughs> it's been funny to watch and sad yeah. to see. Um, my my question is: Is do you think Smugs is going to have a mental breakdown at some point this season? Oh, he already has. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> no, he's doing okay, I think. <laughs> Better than... I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have to ask, just because, I mean, Decapitators have a lot of pressure on them this season. There's a, a lot of talent on the roster. They've been consistently rated one of the top teams, and I think Train has flat out said at one point, there's no team in trance that can beat this roster. Now, I don't necessarily feel like that's necessarily the case because there's great teams like FB and Devil Duke sitting out there waiting in the wings, obviously, and still Carnage as well that you guys play later this stage. I mean, is there a lot? Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on this team to perform to expectations? Like nothing but a championship will be acceptable? Or do you feel like everybody's just kind of rolling with the punches? Um, I don't know. I can't really speak for the rest of the team. I feel like mm -hmm. half of us are probably just like, you know, we're we're just adapting as we go and you know personally for me i just like playing so i don't really feel the pressure of like you know we got to get it it's all or nothing you know i'm just kind of like here for the ride glad i'm here you know and maybe there's some pressure you know for some other people on the team i'm not sure but i think all in all we're just having fun and figuring stuff out as we go <laughs> Now, obviously, you've been playing competitive Overwatch for a good long time here. Given that, obviously, we're moving into Overwatch 2 time. And you've played every role. So, I, I, I mean, you've had a variety of experiences. Now, moving into Overwatch 2, it's an entirely new set of experiences. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to or worried about? Anything along those lines? Um, Honestly, I'm just looking forward to the game coming out. Like, I'm looking forward to trying all the roles, seeing how they play, you know, in Overwatch 2. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that people are worried about, and it's it's just not it's not I'm not feeling it too much. I'm just kind of like happy it's coming out, and I'm excited to try it. So, <laughs> yeah, I got you. I completely understand that. For the record, I definitely hear you on that one. Uh, so, Nagi, outside of Overwatch, obviously, as I say, there's a life outside of Overwatch. Believe it or not, uh, you mentioned that you spend. Uh, you you mentioned one thing in particular. Uh, figure skating, yes, which I thought was quite interesting. You mentioned that you're something you're trying to get back into. Yeah, um, I used to figure skate uh, when I was younger, about until I was 15 or so. I went to competitions all over the country, and I have some medals somewhere. I don't know. Uh, and then I had some knee problems, so I had to quit. But I'm trying to kind of get that strength back and hopefully get back into it because it seems seems like it'd be good for me, you know, just to health wise and just in general i mean it was always fun so <laughs> do you do you follow professional figure skating at all like the olympic level or were you just kind of i, I was just curious because i know olympic figure skating was a huge controversy 
uh, here recently with I yeah I followed that I watched mm-hmm. some of the uh, performances and stuff I was a lot more into it when I was younger but yeah I mm-hmm. saw a lot of that stuff and it's it's interesting it's fun <laughs> stuff fun yeah. stuff uh, <laughs> you also mentioned that you're spending uh, uh, you like to do some cooking on the side mm-hmm. as well uh, mm-hmm. you know can you, what about that anything in particular you do or you do with that or experience or any particular favorite thing you like to cook uh, my favorite thing I like to cook varies from time to time, but right now I like to make a uh, chicken katsu. It's really good. And mm. I also have good recipe for burritos. So I like to make those and, <laughs> and apple pie. <laughs> those are my mm-hmm. things right now. <laughs> uh, that's a variety of experiences right there. You're just <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like gonna... everywhere. <laughs> you know, I, I like, I like all kinds of cuisines and then name three very different foods. I, res- yep. I respect it. I respect it. Uh, <laughs> you also said you do a lot of dancing and cosplaying as well. Yep. I like to combine those together. Uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately with conventions, well, conventions are opening up now. I'm still being safe, but yeah. uh, you know, that was my favorite thing to do is go to conventions, cosplay. They have these like uh, dance lip sync battles and stuff that I like to enter one three years in a row at one place so just saying <laughs> a question in chat do you have all the mercy skins yes you all do. of them yes the pink, the pink mercy as well oh yeah <laughs> the one yeah i know i i i i i i want them to bring it back but i don't think they ever will and i think they've said as much i don't think they they said they ever planned on bringing it back yeah so <sighs> sad i mean they should at least make like a breast cancer awareness other skin for somebody else maybe be nice that would be that would be nice that would be nice i'm with you on that one uh i uh i have to ask as well before because we're coming up close to the end on this here uh is there anything in uh in particular you want to say to the community at all to the community uh mm-hmm. man <laughs> put me on the spot here i don't know it's just great community everybody met so many people throughout the community and everybody i've met is just absolutely wonderful so you know Pretty much to everybody who I've who I've ever talked to, you know, just keep being awesome. You guys are great. Community's great. And uh yeah. <laughs> Not much to say about that, but <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Nagi. It was a pleasure having you. Good luck to the decaps the rest of the season. It's not that I'm heavily invested in that or not at all. But rooting for you guys because obvious reasons. But <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Nagi. And by the way, everybody. If you want more Nagi, you'll see Nagi on Monday on the Iris podcast. So <laughs> be sure to tune in, everybody. All right. Thank you very much, Nagi. All right. Before we end our night here, guys, we do have our final interview. It's a recorded interview with FT from Thunderbolt Rewind. And uh, here it is. All right. Welcome here to this interview. I'm Mr. Yeti, and I am joined today by FT from Thunderbolt Rewind. How are you doing, FT? I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Good evening, oh. everyone. All right. It's excited to have you here representing the Thunderbolt Rewind. Always nice to get some people from our EU uh, region here as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about like how you got into Overwatch in the first place. I started playing Overwatch mostly because other friends played back in 2016. I was actually hardstuck bronze forever, uh, but mostly played casually. Then around 2019, 2020, I discovered the uh, team environment. Started uh, screaming, participating in tournaments like uh, GGU as well as the most known one uh, in Loilo. Uh, mostly, though, I got more into management. And mm-hmm. given that, well, unfortunately, I'm pretty busy in weekends. And actually, the fact that uh, tranquility airs in like uh, during the week is helpful. But besides that, I got a lot into management and discovered uh, everything around Overwatch in low and uh, high elo. Well, gameplay wise, low because. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, besides that, now, hey, I still uh, hovered around here. And now I met, got to meet new people and uh, Overwatch overall. Uh, you could argue that it's still a fun game despite being almost dead, but it changed my life. I, I feel that. I understand that completely. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you ended up uh, meeting up with uh, Th- uh, Thunderbolt Rewind and uh, kind of where, where how you guys got to where you are today. Well, the interesting part is... Uh, uh, throughout my entire, let's call it, career in team environment, every player in Thunderbolt Rewind but one has at some part, at some time in his career, been managed by me. Ah, okay. In, uh, in some team on the other. So we ended up being uh, 
we ended up being friends and even the one that is never been matched by me i already knew him uh, for other reasons in the end uh, we ended up saying hey we are like this we saw this tournament in loilo let's see let's say let's see how far we can go even sure. though each one of us has their own thing like i manage another team elsewhere or people are in other people are doing other stuff let's see how we can go and in the end uh, i think uh, even if like the objective is not winning the whole tournament per se it's more like to have fun even mm-hmm. though we still hope to win uh, as much as we can and then we are having fun for the most part absolutely and i mean it looks like you guys i mean it's been kind of an, an up we'll call it an up and down stage one but we're going into stage two now uh you guys got to be feeling pretty good moving into stage two knowing you're already at least gonna see some time in the playoffs for sure here and uh uh feeling good kind of moving forward and up against some upcoming up up uh, up against pardon me some of these uh teams you haven't faced yet uh yeah i think we're pretty good mm-hmm. uh the the how we feel regarding gameplay i think it's more of a coin flip because sure. uh, we uh, often end up given that we're more pseudo casual we, we end up mm-hmm. uh, uh changing roles and sure. like, the, the coin flip end up being uh, besides one of our players resting pieces was stuck on tank uh, for sr reasons end up being okay am i on tank uh, then we're probably we're probably struggle a little more am i uh, is uh, linus tech tip uh, our probably our best main tank in mm-hmm. what we have on tank uh, then we probably can put up a fight but besides that, uh, no matter what roster, like who is going to play what, uh, I think uh, we will try still to put up a fight. And I think against the uh, most uh, mid- mid-tier teams and even some of the high-tier teams, uh, mm-hmm. we can still show that, hey, we exist. We can do something <laughs> for playoffs. That, that's the exciting part is you'll get another shot at a lot of these teams here that yes. may or may not have come at you earlier this season. Uh, so Thunderbolt, obviously, like I said, two and three working out pretty well. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, there is life outside of Overwatch, like we said, yes. a little bit of a dead game, perhaps. Uh, but uh, so you mentioned before you were a student. Yes, I am currently finished a master's degree. Oh, in, awesome. Uh, yeah, in uh, translation, mostly the languages and translation here mm-hmm. in Italy. The interesting part still related to Overwatch. For my other degree, my previous degree, my bachelor, my thesis was on Overwatch itself. Oh, so really? When I say that Overwatch actually changed my life and it can help, it actually you, it actually helped me in my university career as well. It was related to its uh, uh, localization and its translation, but in the end, it was very helpful. I'm about to finish that. I hope still to I hope to work in the future in uh, the like the language world or everything concerning. Uh, these kind of uh, aspects when I'm not in thinking ranked or in uh, or with Thunderbolt Rewind, I usually <laughs> like to do that. That's awesome. That's really cool. I never would have expected anybody to make a thesis about playing Overwatch unless it was a psychological evaluation at this point. So, um, <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy. To, that's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, what about like outside of uh, obviously outside of your studies, which is I mean, master's degree. That's awesome. Congratulations on getting uh, that you. far so far, by the way, coming from a college dropout myself. Um, <laughs> but I have to I just have to ask, what do you what do you do uh, for fun? Just kind of outside of Overwatch, outside of obviously your studies. Well, uh, I play other uh, games, mostly single player games like RPG, a bit of Pokemon used to mostly a lot of Fire Emblem. I actually love the, uh, the strategy, the strategy, the strategy part of those games, which again, uh, goes back into Overwatch and, and the things behind the scenes, which so it applies to single player games as well. Uh, outside the sheer video games, I am what I like to define myself as a, a sportsman on the couch. Which would oh, mean yeah. I, I watch uh, a lot of sports mm-hmm. like uh, football or soccer for most of you guys, uh, <laughs> basketball, Formula One, uh, and so on. But I'm not the kind of person that would uh, do that myself. What's What's your team in in, in football? I have to know. Uh, that would be Juventus Football Club. Ah, in okay. Turin. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm not. I admit I'm far from an expert, and I basically usually only follow Premier League and uh, only uh, the World Cup, but. Uh, I gave based on where you said you were going to school. I don't think we want to talk about the World Cup too much right now. No, I to, no. To be honest, uh, <laughs> me and and other people saw it coming. But oh, oh yeah, no, that's disappointing. I I couldn't believe it for what it's worth. I still remember watching. Uh, what was it? What what was it? Eight? It's uh, twelve years ago. You guys took the World Cup. I'm trying to remember. Uh, sixteen years. Sixteen years. Two thousand six. I mean, I'm coming from US, and we've never won one. So <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> 
know about you, it. You so. you host one uh, in the like in twenty what is it twenty twenty six twenty twenty six. Uh, I I cannot wait. Honestly, I'm really excited. Yeah. We actually just got our first soccer team here in Minnesota, and uh, I I, I'm I'm very happy. I've been enjoying that quite. Uh, the culture is so much fun. It's so much cooler than any other sport. I love it. So, uh, but anyways, besides the point, I could I could sit here and talk about that a lot. I love it so much. Uh, and anyways, we're coming up to kind of where uh, we're gonna call, call it call it uh, call the interview here. But I just have to kind of ask: Is there any other last words, last comments you want to make uh, for people who may be watching for those who are watching like uh do, just do not sleep on us we might be scuffed they might have a, a, a manager a linus tech tip that's that experience and an assistant manager on 40 fps yours truly <laughs> but we can still put up a fight just don't sleep on us yet uh, I don't think I, I would not sleep personally. Hey, I, I will say uh, my, my pick coming out of this pool is Thunderbolt. I'm just saying. And I'm not saying that just because you're here. I'm saying that just because I think that's where it's at. So I, I, saw, the, I saw the predictions <laughs> on this week's match. Don't there you go. I know. There you go. Uh, all right, FT, well, thank you so much for joining us. And best of luck to you and your team uh, the rest of the way. And uh, we'll kick it over to our next interview right now. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Well, thank you to FT. There is no other interview. That was a lie because uh, FT is our final interview of the night. Uh, but thank you again, FT, for uh, taking that interview. We appreciate you uh, recording that with me earlier on this uh, earlier on uh, this week. Uh, as a reminder, moving into next week, guys, we have on Monday the Iris podcast. That's going to be myself and Thuggington uh, and Nagisa on that cast. And then after that, we'll have Predicting Tranquility hosted by Bowsy as well. On Tuesday, we have your Harmony tier feature match. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that. That is a matchup between uh, uh, A10 Esport and Snubble Gold, as well as Amateur Professional and Strix. So again, make sure you tune in for that one. Should be a fantastic matchup indeed. Uh, and then in addition to that, of course, we also have the Transcendence Tier Feature Match on Wednesday. That is Meraki taking on Reckless Sigma. And then on Thursday, it's the Discord Tier Feature Match that brings you Space Created taking on the Quaka Queens. Uh, but we thank you for tuning in this week here in Tranquility and here tonight on the Beat Drop. And we thank, obviously, Nagi as well as FT and Hydros and YB for being here tonight for an interview. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward to seeing you again real soon. Have a great night.